gentlemen of the internet and welcome to making a meal of it. And before you ask, yes, I have got my finger and yet that is the cutest plaster you will ever see in your entire life. It's a little cupcakes with faces on it, it's so cute. So today I am making a deliciously decadent, if not slightly dangerous dish. And I say dangerous because of the dangerous number of calories. I haven't counted them, I didn't even think about it, uh, but it's basically carbs and they, so yeah, you know. But anyway, I wouldn't recommend having this on a regular basis, just every once in a while for a treat. Then again, my sister grew up on basically carbs and cheese and she ended up thin as a stick. This is what I get for eating a varied diet. So in the last installment of making a meal of it, I made chilli and spaghetti bolognese, which was a recipe that was one of the first that my mum taught me how to make. So this episode I'm going to make a dish that my dad used to cook for me and my sister whenever my mum was away, so um, it's got quite a lot of fond memories attached to it. And if you haven't guessed by the title, it's macaroni and cheese. So what will you need to make four portions of this? Dried pasta. And I'll get on to how to measure this later on in the video, but for now I'll just say just to get a pack of 500 grams from the supermarket. That should do fine for this recipe, plus you'll have some left over at the end. Quarter of a litre of milk. Quarter of a litre of double cream. Don't look at me like that. 100 grams of Philadelphia cheese. Or any other soft cheeses that are available. 200 to 300 grams of cheddar. This will just depend on how strong the cheddar you've got is. And I would say to you to get quite strong cheddar, otherwise the flavour won't really come through. So uh, what you can do is add 200 grams at first and have a taste, see if it's strong enough for you. If it's not, add another 50 grams and if it's still not, add another 50 grams. Half a heap teaspoon of mustard powder and again this is just to bring out the flavour of the cheese. Sweet corn. I don't know what you might be thinking, but Samantha, sweet corn's a vegetable. That would be considered healthy. You promised us indulgence and dishealth. Well, don't worry, you don't have to add anything healthy. This is optional. I just think it adds a little bit of texture. Plus, you can add some other vegetables if you like. Uh, my dad used to always add sweet corn and mushrooms because that was about the only vegetables that my sister would eat when she was little. And last but not least, bacon. Again, this is optional. Just get eight rashers, so that's two for each portion. And all this talk of dairy products brings me to my point of interest. So today's point of interest is lactose intolerance. And lactose intolerance is actually very common worldwide, but not so much in Western nations. So you can see in this map here, the percentage of the population who are lactose intolerant in different countries. So the darker the blue, the higher the percentage of those affected. You can see that in places like Northern Europe, Australia and parts of the USA, it's quite low. Whereas places like Asia, South Africa and South America have a very high percentage of people who are lactose intolerant. Then the reason for this is that there's a chemical called lactase which breaks down lactose, which is found in dairy products. Lactose intolerance is caused by an insufficient amount of lactase in the sufferer's gut. The decrease in the production of lactase is actually natural in most mammals due to the fact that as they age, they won't need to digest their mother's milk anymore. However, we are able to continue producing lactase due to something called lactase persistence, which is actually a genetic trait. It's believed that the variation that we've seen in the map is caused by natural selection. This is because those living in Northern Europe, way back when, would have found that cow's milk was a very good source of nutrition, whereas those in other areas may not have had access to cows or may have found other food sources. This common form of lactose intolerance actually only causes mild symptoms, if any at all. True lactose intolerance is either caused by a complete lack of lactase at birth or due to damage in the gut, preventing it from producing lactase. Absence at birth is very rare and would cause symptoms shortly after birth. An example of a secondary cause would be celiac disease and the damage to the gut in this case is caused by an allergic reaction to gluten which is found in products such as bread and pasta. So unfortunately, cheesy pasta would be completely off the menu for people with celiac disease. But luckily for me, I can't eat it. So let's go make some. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to boil your pasta. 
and I find that the best way to measure out pasta is just to use two handfuls per portion. So in this case that would be eight handfuls because you're making four portions. And you can just boil it according to packet instructions except you're going to take off about two or three minutes so that it's al dente. And if you know what that means, congratulations on being middle class. For everyone else it just means that it's going to be a little bit undercooked so it's still a little bit hard. And then you're going to drain it. When me and my sister were little my dad used to entertain us by making the pasta sort of jump up and down and pretend it was alive and it was too hot. Oh, ouch! Ouch! Ow! Oh, hot! Hot! Ow! Yeah, those were, uh, those were simpler times. We didn't have Sky TV or video games back then. Whoops, looks like we've lost a few. I guess they couldn't take the strain. Get it? B because I'm straining the, straining the pasta. No, no. It's funny, okay? Then you're going to pop the pasta back on the medium heat. Then you're going to add the cream in the milk and you're going to leave that for 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, keep stirring it as well. Do make sure that the pot doesn't get too hot because you do not want that to curdle. Also don't worry if it looks like there's going to be too much liquid because that will thicken up later. Meanwhile you're going to pop the bacon under the grill for about 5 to 10 minutes under a uh, high heat, just depending on how crispy you like it. Then you're going to add the Philadelphia cheese and just mix it until it's all melted in. While that's doing its thing, you can pop the sweet corn in the microwave for about a minute and a half until it defrosts. Then you're gradually going to add the cheddar in, keep stirring it until it's all melted. Add the sweet corn in. Then you're going to mix the teaspoonful of mustard with a little bit of water, just in an egg cup or a shot glass, and then you're going to pop it in. Give it a good stir and leave it for five minutes before plating up. Then get your bacon and a pair of scissors and snip it into strips, just over the top of the pasta. And that's it. Thanks very much for watching. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you really liked it, subscribe. So to see my last video, you can click here. It's about organisation tips. And to see the last episode of Making It Real, click here. And it's on spaghetti bolognese and chilli. See you later, alligators. So in the last installment of Making a Meal of It, I made <coughs> didn't make coffee. Coffee? No, I didn't make coffee here.